All right, how you guys doing today? So this video will pretty much show you how I flex fill my personal vehicle, um, especially my track cars. And what flex fill is, is you're running on E85 or gasoline. E85 pretty much means that 85% of the fuel is ethanol, and ethanol is pretty much made of corn, cornstarch, and you know, it's kind of biofuel using uh, uh, cornstarch. Same process as making beer, um, you make E85 with it. And what's E85? You can just uh, YouTube it, Google it. There's a lot of videos about it, um, what it is. And it's pretty much a, it's kind of like a cheap race gas. Um, it's anywhere from between 105 to 110 octane. Uh, if you do your research online, uh, that's pretty much it. And the reason why I use flex fuel for my personal vehicle, uh, especially my track cars, is that uh, there's one near my work, there's one near my house. So it's, available for me uh, more than the race fuel and it's a lot cheaper as well so and what what you need to flex fuel your vehicle is you got to have a good uh, uh, ECU or EMS engine management what I run personally is a link ECU uh, link monsoon for the both black sparrow and the both uh, uh, black sparrow and the white walker as well and you can order this from, um, you know, from the link website. Um, I, I ordered mine from Josh from CRW. Thank you, Josh. You're the man. Uh, also, Ruben uh, Falcon, Falcon Creation, out on the East Coast. Um, he also does the BTI cluster as well for it. So, and the next what you need is uh, you need a good tuner. I personally use Danny from Unrivaled Tuning in Orange County. He, he's, he's an amazing tuner. Um, for you to be a good tuner, um, in my eyes, is you can tune any ECU, you know, over one or the other. If a customer has a certain ECU, um, you're gonna able to learn it and tune it. So, I had this Link ECU about a year ago, and I asked Danny, I'm like, hey, Danny, can you know, can you tune Link? And pretty much, he said, oh, I've, I've never tuned it before, but, but I'll learn. So he went ahead and just pretty much learned the ECU and he loves it. He loves the link now. And he tuned all of my cars that has a link ECU. And now he's a certified um, SoCal link tuner. So big shout out to that Danny. Thank you, man. You're the best. Um, thank you for putting up all my crap, especially with my cars, you know, making you do this. <laughs> but um, yeah, man. Uh, so what Danny does is not only he tuned my car to to a safe level, but he also uh, put some uh, fail safe, fail safe system in the ECU. So if my if my temperature or my fuel pressure drops, the car will be on a uh, on a rev limiter. So pretty much saving my engine. It's like, hey, you're in limp mode. You better knock it off, stop boosting or something, you know. But once it's back to normal, the car runs fine. So I was experienced that at the track a couple of times and it's pretty much telling me, hey, you better slow down or you better not, you know, do this. So I've saved my engine a couple of times because of that. So thank you, Danny, for installing the fail safe on the car. Um, I didn't know I had it until he told me, hey, man, you know what? Your car has a fail safe system on it. So if anything happens to it, you know, that's just the issue telling you, hey, you better knock it off. So um, he's he's the best SoCal tuner for me. Um, I've and he gets pretty busy so if you guys want to use them you gotta book them in advance and the next thing is you gotta have injectors usually you want to go double or more um, stay between a thousand to 1700 cc injectors and the next thing you want is you gotta have a flex fuel um, I mean not a flex but a E85 compatible fuel pump what I personally run is an AEM 340 LP that is E85 compatible as well and the next thing you want is a fuel pressure regulator. I use a radium uh, four bar fuel pressure regulator and then also a flex fuel sensor. And I use only the GM sensor. So if you guys want to use good stuff, I say, you know, use the best stuff out there just because the motor you, know, you built is very expensive. And the last thing you want is, you know, all these little parts filling on you. So get the good stuff, get the best stuff. And what I use for my uh, fuel filter is I run a fuel lab, mic uh, six microns. 
So the smaller the number, the smaller the net. So I believe the injectors are about seven microns uh, filter inside of it as well. So, um, and I run a fuel lab six microns, so it even cleans it really nice before it gets, it gets to the injectors. So, and, um, and I only use fuel lab. Um, it's a little more money than other brands, but it's, it's totally worth it. The last thing I want is my filter giving out on me, you know, or like clogging up when I'm at the, uh, when I'm at the track. And it's also replaceable on uh, the cartridge as well. So you can replace the cartridge. And the thing with the, uh, when you go flex fuel, um, the, the best part about it is that I can run 91 octane or E85. And the thing with SoCal is that we don't have anything higher than 91, you know, at the gas station, but we do have change lane here we do have um, uh, E85 which is cool and remember um, all of my all of my cars are, are mainly gen 4 and gen 5s uh, from, a, from a Caldina and the end the gasoline they use in Japan are like really high rated like around 95 98 90, 101 octane you know and we don't have that here in California or especially in SoCal so I see a lot of guys um, running on 91 and like e increasing their boost um, you're pretty much risking it because the car is not um, the engine not designed for this low but octane um, in my what I see So the, the only alternative is you know, having your car flex fuel and having your car custom tuned So pretty much from my uh, I'm gonna start building all these flex um, flex fuel uh, MR2s Just because it's a lot safer and you get more horsepower and it's actually you get a custom tune for every single car, you know, that I that that I'm gonna have uh, from now on. And not only for 91, but also for, for E85. So if the same car goes to like in the East Coast where you, you're pumping 93 octane, it's actually better for the car because 93 is way better than 91. So it's actually it's it's, it's tuned for. For, uh, for gasoline and, and, and uh, E85. And I apologize for this long video. Um, I don't edit or anything. I just record and go. So uh, just bear with me. And then um, that's, uh, and also most important thing is having your fuel line upgraded to a E85 compatible hoses. What I use is I use PTFE uh, Teflon inside with the stainless steel and with the vinyl wrap outside. So I do sell all these parts. Uh, you can go to my Instagram. Bob MR2 uh, to uh, to pretty much uh, hit me up there if you want to like you know order some lines for me um, and and also you can order the link from you know from Jaw CRW go see your local tuner talk to him first about it like hey can you tune it with this before you spend any more money um, do your research of what 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 your power goal is um, what your budget is. And then um, Mark Panic does have a plug and play kit for the Gen 4 and Gen 5s. So if you wanna order that, um, hit up Josh from CRW. Um, those guys work well together. And whatever you need on your, uh, on your harness, just let him know and then he can wire it up to, into, your, uh, into, your, uh, into your harness and then uh, into an adapter. So it'd be plug and play kit kind of thing. All right, so the benefit of Flex Fuel is um, if you have if you live in a colder environment, uh, especially with the snow and stuff, um, you can put regular gas on because it takes in a cold environment. E85 doesn't work very well. It takes longer to ignite because the E85 actually burn a lot cooler. So that's good for knock. So um, you get actually lo lower knock numbers when you run E85, lower the knock. Uh, and then also the good thing about uh, the E85 here in SoCal is a lot cheaper because you do require a lot more 30% uh, more fuel versus gasoline. But in California, uh, we get them for like 269 a gallon, 299 a gallon, and then gasoline. Regular gasoline here is like 350, four dollars even. So that's the benefit of us having um, uh, government regulated gas for cheap, and it's like pretty much a race fuel for us guys running like flex fuel. So that's the benefit of having a flex fuel uh, vehicle, pretty much. Uh, and the thing about, um, the negative thing about E85 is that you don't want to let it sit in the tank for too long, probably like 90 days. If, if it's your race car and you put it away for the summer uh, or the winter, 
I would uh, drain that out and put uh, 91 octane in there or like you know regular gasoline if you're in uh, if you're in SoCal. So don't let the 85 sit for too long. Uh, but since you're in California and you drive this car year round, so it doesn't really matter. Um, I, I I put gasoline on mine uh, only because uh, they're mostly my track cars and I only put 85 when I use it at the track. So that's the benefit of having a flex fuel. And of course, not all the time the gas pump has true E85. You know, sometimes you get E70, E50, E60. That's that's where the flex fuel sensor comes in, and the tuner you can tune for that specific um, ethanol content. So that's the benefit of having a flex fuel sensor, and it's more accurate, and and it's the right content for your car and for your tune. So you don't have to worry about oh, is this true E85 or not? It doesn't matter because um, the ECU will compensate for whatever gasoline or E85 uh, percentage in your gas tank. All right, let's 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 talk about costs. What it's gonna cost you to do a uh, flex fuel your current MR2. Pretty much the ECU, it's gonna run you about anywhere from $800 to $1,500, depending on the ECU you want. Um, the next thing is the tune. The tune varies from like um, $700 to $1,500, depending on your tuner. And the injectors varies from like 350 to 800. Um, your E85 fuel filter, your FPR, flex fuel, hoses, uh, probably like another 500 bucks. So you're looking at about close to $3,000 um, in most like in parts and in tune. But it's, you know what, it's $3,000 that you get a custom tune for your vehicle, you get to flex fuel it, and it's a lot safer for your vehicle as well. So in my eyes, it's totally worth it. And remember, all of this stuff that you're doing to your MR2, it's a want. You don't need 350 horsepower. You don't need 400 horsepower. You don't need flex fuel. You want it, you know? So, I mean, when you want stuff, it's not cheap. And you gotta fork it out the money to to pretty much have a solid car. So, um, that's pretty much it. Um, I hope this video helped you guys. If you guys like what I do, subscribe to my channel. Give me a thumbs up. Hit that bell button. Go to my Instagram, give me a follow. Uh, it shows me that you guys are like actually, you know, watching these videos. If not, then I'll just, you know, do my own thing and I'll continue um, doing my cars. But um, anyways, so enjoy the video that I'm gonna post right now. Um, the, this next video is gonna, um, next segment, is gonna show you how I personally do it on my, per uh, on my setup, on my White Walker and Black Sparrow. All right, so this is how I set up my flex fuel on my car so pretty much what you do is you got to start from the fuel pump which is over here right here and i'm running an aem 340 lp e85 um, ethanol compatible so that's what it comes with aem um, same installation as the walbro 255s okay so first off what you want to do is you want to this is the line for the fuel pump. Um, here's the fitting that I have. Um, you can go to my Instagram. Um, I do sell all this stuff. You put that on here, tight. And um, here's my custom PTFE line. Um, it is thin and steel inside with the vinyl wrap outside. So it is uh, made for e ethanol E85. Okay, and then from there, what you want to do is you want to get one of the Fuel Lab E85 filter. This is a six micron filter. So the smaller the micron number, the finer the um, the mesh inside the filter. So with ethanol, you want it to be as fine as possible, and um, six micron is what you want to use. So I I only use Fuel Lab. Um, Fill that filter. A little bit more expensive, but you know what? You have a very expensive engine, so let's use the best stuff. And then the fitting goes in here. It's a DAS 6 AN fitting. Okay. And then this hose, you can get this and replace your stock um, corroded metal line as well. I do sell that as well. So um, you could go on my Instagram. Um, just, just give me a DM. 
All right, and from there, we will connect the feed to the fuel rail. So that connects there. And then there's also a fitting that I have. So this fitting goes to the rail, the Gen 4 and Gen 5 rails, to a DAS 6. All right. And then this is the, the top piece to uh, replace your stock fuel pressure regulator. So you want to put that onto the rail. Pretty simple stuff. Step that in place. Perfect. Put the 10 mil bolt in. And with these fittings, they are aluminum, so don't over torque them. It's going to strip the bolt. All right, and then get this other fuel line. And you wanna use um, E85 hose compatible. And the best one would be the, um, the one that I use would be the PTFE, Teflon, Teflon hose. All right, that goes into that. And from there, uh, I have this made into, connects to the radi radium fuel pressure regulator. It's a DAS6 as well. Okay, and from there, another, this is the return line from the radian, radium, from the bottom of that radium, all the way to the flex fuel sensor. So the flex fuel sensor, what you wanna use is you wanna use a GM type. So um, a genuine GM flex fuel sensor, okay? And then um, the fittings is a 3 8 to a dash six. So what you do is you pull this clip off and then you slide in place until you hit, until you hit a click. Click, click, all right? So that goes there. And I, and I mount mine on the engine, on the side engine mount, on the driver's side. So this will pretty much reads how much ethanol or gasoline is in here. So you can run 91 or E85. And then that goes all the way to the return line, to the stock piece. So what I use is I use one of these um, quarter inch to a DAS6 with a hose. So what you want to do is you want to put this right next to the return line. So that way there's no E85 um, touching the rubber at all. So as tight as possible. So that creates like um like a hard line from that into the into the PTFE fuel line. Okay, so it's gonna connect it in place. Okay. And get one of the hose clamps. And you wanna push in as as, as much as possible. It's a little bit trickier if you have this on the car, but if you're outside, it's easier. So that touches that, and then this line just goes in here. All right. So that's how I have the setup on my track car. So the whole line is PTFE rated, and it's for ethanol, and I'm E85 compatible. So you could put gasoline or E85, and um, this is pretty much the solid way that I run on my car. Um, if your vehicle is out of the car, I mean the gas tank is out of the car, and if you want to redo this line to an actual uh, DAS6, um, you can buy a quarter inch um, slip-on, and then it's a DAS6 attached to it. But um, yeah, this is how you do an E85 setup on your MR2. So, and you also need an ECU as well. Um, what I run is a link. I run a link monsoon. So that has a flex fuel sensor for it. And you also need a, um, a custom tune. So the, the person that I use is Danny from Unbridled Tuning. Um, he's the best tuner in SoCal that I know of. So um, he's been tuning all of my cars and none of them has a problem. And all of them ran great, beautiful. And I love that two step that he did for me as well. So um, that's pretty much it. This whole setup, um, I would say a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars on the ECU, um, another thousand to like twelve hundred dollars for 
for a flex fuel tune from your tuner. And then, um, of course, you need to run your injectors. Um, for the E85, you want to at least run a 1,000cc injectors and up. And don't go past 1,700cc. Um, because ethanol needs a lot more fuel to, a lot more ethanol to basically, um, same, same way as a gasoline. I'm not sure if that makes sense or not, but it does need require a lot more fuel. And the Link ECU, you can order them at Josh um, from CRW um, or Falcon Rubin. And then um, the lines and stuff, you can, you can DM me. Um, go on my Instagram, BobMR2, and just let me know what you need. And um, I'll get you squared away as well. And I got all of these, um, all of this filter radiant from my, from my, from my good friend George from OC Auto Style. Um, the fuel lab and the AEM filter. So you can hit them up there to get all your sensors or you, or you get them through me, it doesn't matter. Or I'll get them on eBay, Amazon. And um, that's pretty much it. All right, so what you wanna do is you get this little fitting, um, connects to your return line. So this is the return line on the car. So you just gotta put it when the two metal piece touch click together. So it's as tight as you can, and then you're gonna clamp it together. All right, so this is the return line on the car. I went ahead and uh, disconnect the hose, the factory hose, and just put it aside. Um, it's my track car, so I'm gonna made use that later on if I decide to go back to flex on um, regular fuel. But um, yeah, that's just the return line right next to the fitting to the feet. And then just snake your way into here, touches it, and then clamp it together. So pretty much the fitting touches the rail, return line, and then just clamp it down. And then that's the feed right there. This is the return. All right, and go ahead and then uh, just go ahead and zip tie. Um, I zip tie my feed that right here to the brake line, and then kind of do like that, so that way it gets uh, so it clears the heat shield and all that stuff. Cool. All right, I went ahead and cut one of these um, vacuum hose so I can slide it um, into the heat shield so it doesn't like damage the hose line and all. So I went ahead and uh, installed that rubber piece underneath the heat shield so it doesn't touch the line. So there it is, well there, so nice and cushioned. All right, and that um, return line going to the flex fuel sensor and the flex fuel sensor line goes all the way to the FPR and the FPR go to the rail. And then the rail goes into the feed, which is this sinister line. So underneath this um, black stuff is this line right here. So you can extend the line regardless. And this can go to your fuel pump. Cool. So the final result is that we got the feed line um, with the fitting. Goes into the fuel filter. The fuel filter go into this stainless steel line. Um, underneath this this line, the, the black rubber piece, the vinyl wrap, is this stainless steel line. So you're getting stainless steel line regardless. And this is going to the rail, and rail and going to the fitting, to the AN fitting. And from there it goes, uh, the line goes all the way to the FPR, the fuel pressure regulator. And the FPR goes down, it goes into the flex fuel sensor. That's the flex fuel sensor on the bottom. That's my boost solenoid. And from there it goes all the way into the return line where we mod the fitting to the rubber hose to the um, to the return line. So as long as it touches together, so that E85 can go straight, straight, straight through it. All right, so um, that's it. All right, next thing you wanna do is um, jump the FP to the B plus right there, right there. And then um, just put the ignition on. Don't, do not crank the engine. Just put it on on, so that way the, the fuel pump can, can flow and then you're gonna check the leaks. So I do this every time I um, start the motor. Just make sure that every um, the engine's primed with with uh, with fuel and oil as well. So it's the fuel pump is pumping. Check for leaks. Good, good. There's there's the fuel going through here. There's fuel going through here. And then uh, check the bottom for leak as well. 